Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ersin, and today I'm going to talk to you about our recent work in procedural modeling using autoencoder networks. Before going into what we're trying to do, um, let's first start with looking at what conventional procedural modeling looks like. In general, there will be a number of parameters uh, in the order of tens, and the, the end user will be manipulating these parameters in order to get to a design they like or they're searching for. One of the biggest uh, problem with these systems, besides the obvious too many parameters to deal with problem, is that the high dimensional space these parameters create is uh, highly nonlinear with respect to visual expectations. For instance, here on the right, you can see that um, if we sample the space evenly, the resulting model does not comply with, with our expectations with respect to um, any source of shape similarity. We would like to replace this with a reduced dimensional search um, followed by interpolation for fine tuning uh, which is much more intuitive for especially casual users designing objects for their taste or custom, customizing for 3D printing. One of the interesting attempts to solve this problem was um, by Talden and um, they were mainly creating a crowdsource exploration tool. They embed uh, sample designs into a crowdsourced landmark space where landmarks are created by super users who are more experienced than the average user in the database. Um, this embedding creates a lower dimensional space better than conventional parameter embedding and users can navigate through the sample models in this space for selecting their target design. Another interesting and recent, recent work in this space is by Leonard. Um, in order to completely eliminate parameter space design, they built uh, thumbnail galleries with a pre-sampled set of models from which, again, the end user um, selects at design time. The problem with these um, methods is that uh, these are not generative um, in the, um, at the heart. And they will be mainly uh, pre there will be pre-computed pre models and the end user will be only selecting from those without fully exploiting the, the generative procedure model uh, underlying the system. Our method builds uh, on the basics of deep feature learning with autoencoders. Most relevant to our, ours is the work by Hinton where they show that the training a multi-layer uh, symmetric autoencoder is much more efficient if you separate and train the layers as independent restricted Boltzmann machines and fine tune the fully connected structure with a final pass. This allows for training with significantly less data and significantly less time which we also utilize in our work. Here's a um, schematic overview of our approach. We first utilize categorization trees for sampling the nonlinear procedural design space as uniformly as possible with respect to uh, shape similarities, which I will introduce uh, in a moment. We then use these samples in, in training and autoencoder. We utilize the tra trained autoencoder, more specifically the decoder part of it, in indirect exploration of this 3D um, procedural modeling space using only a few number of parameters which represent the bottleneck layer uh, of the autoencoder. The initial um, step of our method is to sample the procedural modeling rule set in order to create a set of models that uniformly represent the shape variation in the design space. We use categorization trees for this task and categorization trees are efficient in comparing distances uh, different instances and storing similar uh, ones in closer branches in the layout. We modify the categorization tree building approach presented by Huang et al. into um, an iterative version in order to exploit the fact that um, we can sample as many instances as we want um, because of the generative procedural modeling rule set underlying uh, the system. Uh, we built an initial tree from a set of samples from which we iteratively prune um, for selecting representative exemplars for each branch and resample the design space to add more samples and we continue doing this uh, until we converge compared to the previous uh, tree in the previous iteration 
that we are adding only insignificant shape variation to the space. So we almost are sure that we, have, we are covering the space in terms of the different shape variations. Using the samples from our categorization tree, we train an autoencoder network. Um, I will introduce uh, two different versions of this procedure, where we use two different set of input-output pairs. Uh, once the autoencoder is trained, we use the decoder part at runtime, where the user controls only a few number of parameters at the bottleneck um, layer of the network in order to generatively navigate the procedural modeling rule set. Here's the first uh, naive approach to uh, training the network on procedural modeling parameters. Here, the procedural modeling parameters and only those procedural modeling parameters are used as the input-output pairs in the autoencoder training. Note that in this case, uh, the network learns a lower dimensional representation of the design space that solely depends on the relationship of these parameters. So it will try to situate um, nearby samples in the original space in the reduced space as well. However, as you can see, this doesn't help much when our goal is to navigate the design space using the reduced degrees of freedom because the correlation of nearness comes from the arbitrary parameters instead of, ch instead of any source of visu visual similarity. Note that navigating this space is as chaotic as it might be uh, when navigating the original parameter space, if not more. Hence, uh, we introduce additional parameters into the input-output pairs when training the network. We design these additional features to force the network to organize the lower dimensional space in a particular way. In our case, we focus on um, shape similarity, um, which can be effectively measured by shape features such as shape context, inner distance, or the light field descriptor. And um, you can find the de details of these particular features in our paper. Similar to the baseline approach, we use the decoder part of the train network as user control parameters in our interface uh, to navigate the design space. Here's a visual and also a quantitative comparison of our method versus the baseline that we introduced earlier. You can see that the nearby samples in the proposed method um, methods lower dimensional space is much more uniformly distributed compared to the baseline. Here's a closer look at an exemplar region of the learned space. Note that the, the smoother transition uh, of the general container shape through um, between nearby samples are uh, almost always preserved. So whenever the user is traversing the space for a new design, um, the next model that they are exploring is always something they expect um, in terms of visual similarity. Here's the results uh, from our trees data set, uh, where the models also have texture for which we account for with additional um, similarity features while training the network. On the top, there are uniformly sampled models from a random vector in the naive reduced space, whereas on the bottom, we see uh, uniformly sampled models from our reduced space. As you can see, our method results in samples that meet expectations in similarity when, again, navigating this space. Our system also incorporates an interpolation mechanism uh, for fine-tuning the design. The users can select any number of models uh, to interpolate between. We then use uh, barcentric weights of the user's navigation uh, in the interface directly in the lower dimensional space that we learned to interpolate between the models in real time. To validate the efficiency and usability of our method, we performed the user study with 90 participants. Uh, there were two groups, and they were giving, given identical 
tasks in a reversed order where they did not know which system uh, we were testing them for. Specifically, we asked one group uh, to first design a model with the conventional system and then replicate the same design in our system. And then we asked the other group first design a model in our system and then replicate in the uh, conventional system. We have uh, observed that there's, there was a significant speed difference between the groups um, with our system being more than 10 times faster, uh, both in design and replication tasks. And the, rep they were, the users were also much more uh, satisfied with the uh, replicas that they were able to make with our system compared to the conventional one. We also asked the users to rate the two systems on a Likert scale survey after they used the, the, the two systems for design and replication tasks. Uh, there was statistically significant agreement that our system was more in line with, the, with their expectations. It was easier to use and also uh, faster to design with. Uh, I'd like to conclude my talk here and I'm now happy to take your questions. Thank you. Yes. Um, it's a good question. We, we did play with a couple different interfaces, um, but mainly you can see that on, on top, le uh, top right, there is um, a, a, a 3D uh, almost a schematic version of uh, where you are in the uh, in the design space so that the user can situate themselves in the actual 3D design space. Uh, but in general, um, users were much more comfortable with using a 2D interface where they can only, only click on uh, simpler buttons instead of navigating completely in that, in that space. So we, we used it as a, as a widget instead of the actual design space. Yes, yes. Hi, yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you'd played with any other kind of uh, models, for example, uh, Gaussian process latent variable models, or just autoencoders. Um, we, we did play with other, um, we, we did not play with specifically the Gaussian uh, process models, but we did play with other uh, generative models as well. Um, specifically, the, the, the speed of autoencoders, once they're trained, the speed of them in real time being uh, instantaneous, that was the, uh, one of the forces that drove us to using autoencoders instead of those models. Hi, I'm Lynn Marintet from Nui Tech. I was wondering what ideas you have for implementation and deployment for this sort of software. Um, we are actually uh, part of this is um, part of these procedural models are in um, Photoshop already. Uh, the trees model you can use in Photoshop for um, decorating your 2D images. But in general, the applications that we are thinking of with the 3D versions uh, specifically are uh, easy to use design um, customization apps for tablets that you can customize your, your components and then just 3D print them. Thank you. So I'll ask a, a question, maybe inspired a, a bit by um, the keynote this morning. 
about deploying this in ways other than simply having it built into your software. Yes. Have you thought about ways of allowing other people to be able to take advantage of this to build um, spaces? So I think um, that's a good question. And I think the, the main takeaway from this is um, that, uh, let me just open that slide. Particularly um, when, when we are using dimensionality reduction, we don't uh, have a control over how that reduced space is, is laid out. Mm -hmm. So this is really a, a, an almost application agnostic way of controlling any reduced dimensional space with um, functions that you do care for. So this can be used in uh, other applications like speech and, and word um, clustering and learning. So uh, we do believe that um, this is the, the core and which is um, obviously very open. Um, and I think this is the, the main uh, contribution or takeaway that other applications and other systems can use instead of just using our end product in our systems. Okay, so have you also thought about doing this yourself in terms of making some of the software available for other folks or just we, the idea? We have not yet, mm -hmm. but um, the, the um, implementation, the specific implementation that we did use when using the autoencoders are already open sourced. Oh, um, yeah, the, we, can, we can release our scripts, which can be, which should be pretty, um, standard for other people to take them and use them with the open source um, deep learning systems that we use as well. So you said we can. Are you you're going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't answer that question right now. Right, before, yeah. Easier for a university person to be able yes, to do that. Yes, I agree. And I was a university person mm -hmm. just five months ago, so I'm new to this corporate <laughs> thing getting um, into it, but yes, yes, I, I, I believe in the um, in the open source community in general.